As the world demands more intelligence from our electronic devices, building in the ability of our embedded systems to have awareness in the environment around them becomes key. What new developments and capabilities in environmental sensing make our products more interactive with the world around them to the benefit of our end users? When we as embedded engineers design our systems, we've always had to take into account the environment that those systems were going to operate in. Uh, but today, things have changed so much in that not only do we have to consider, can our system survive in that environment, but now we need to design our system such that the system can understand that environment, make decisions in that environment without very much user interaction. This has caused a lot of need for innovation in the environmental sensor space to give us sensors that are more accurate, uh, that are smaller footprint, lower costs, uh, and, and that we've got systems that are able to collect data from a lot of different environmental sensors, fuse that data together, and make those key decisions. Today, I had the privilege of speaking with Dr. Richard Fix, Portfolio and Product Manager at Bosch Sensor Tech, about some of the innovations in environmental sensors today, Dr. Fix, thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate you being on The Current. Great, glad to be here. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So as I've worked with a lot of uh, electrical engineers lately, I've seen more sensors probably than ever before. It's become one of the fastest areas of growth um, in the opportunities that we're working with. What do you think some of the innovations that have occurred in the sensor space um, that maybe have created this need for better environmental sensors are? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for sure, uh, consumer electronics is one of the main drivers here. I mean, sensors like 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 um, the motion or environmental sensors in our product portfolio are in are used in, in in nearly every phone, every wearable. I mean, you need to to be able to track motion, to to track your movements. Yeah, to I mean, for you know, even simple things like a portrait landscape for a phone, you need an accelerometer, right? But um, many don't know that, I mean, nearly every better phone also has a pressure sensor inside um, to measure heat changes, yeah? because this significantly improves how your calories are being calculated and tracked or how much steps you're, you're taking, yeah? right? So, so, right. So, so people probably don't know about those sensors, but nearly everybody on the world is using it, right? Right, right. It's incredible what our systems have been able to do in the utilization of uh, of those small little changes in the environment around us to make you know big impact on the way our devices are reacting to uh, to what's going on uh, with us. Uh, what are some of you know? We obviously know about you know home automation. We obviously you, you mentioned our smartphones. Um, some of these other applications we've gotten fairly familiar with. What are some of the neatest applications that you've seen with environmental sensors uh, that are maybe coming in the next generation of products? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I already mentioned um, basically the first environmental sensor, which, which we have in the markets, uh, then, then much more than a decade and, and more than, I mean, billions of sensors in the field, right? This is the pressure sensor. And, and we continuously extended the, the, the capabilities and performance of such sensors by adding um, the function of humidity sensing, of course, also temperature, right? I mean, this is what you also need in a, in a, in a home. You want to know how comfortable you're living. And then we have extended that to the topic for measuring air quality, because we, I mean, analyzing the market and the people needs, um, air quality is where many people are just thinking about. And this leads us to the, to the point of, of being able to measure gases, yeah? because air quality is about, do you breathe fresh air, yeah? which is basically oxygen, nitrogen, and a reasonable amount of humidity, or do you breathe used air? Yeah? And used air indoor is, is, is first of all mainly about people's exhaled breath. So it means the exhaled air is used air, you don't want to breathe in that um, anymore. Yeah? So this brought us to the topic, if we want to, to provide indoor air quality as a new dimension to the users of consumer electronics, to smart home and, and all the fields you mentioned, we have to be able to measure the gases in humans' exhaled breath. And this is what led us to a VOC sensor technology to be able to detect such gases. So, right. so this is one dimension which we already have in the market. Right, right. Uh, absolutely fascinating. And I think, you know, we're all more and more concerned about our health these days, the air we breathe, what's in that air. And I think, you know, innovations in that space, which are certainly going to impact, you know, things like HVAC systems, um, filtering and everything else uh, is absolutely incredible what that's going to allow us to do um, and, and hopefully live in an environment, a better environment, a healthier environment for all of us um, is just fascinating. 
Um, you know, so one of the earliest designs I think I worked on uh, in my career as an engineer was uh, for a portable oxygen delivery sensor system. Um, and, and so because it was portable, they didn't have a lot of oxygen in the bottles. They were generating that oxygen, oxygen uh, by compressing the air and doing some filtering. Um, and so they, you know, they, they had to just deliver the oxygen to the patient at the exact moment the patient was inhaling or that bottle would empty too quickly. And it was a big challenge for us. This was probably 15 years or so ago to, to get a sensor that was sensitive enough to be able to just detect that very, very small environmental change of a nostril inhalation. Um, we, we were able to make it work and, and, and be able to get it going, but what are some of the advances specifically in pressure technology that you at Bosch have seen and, and that you're working on that, that can enable systems to do things like that? I mean, I, I, I already mentioned that the, the pressure sensors are used since, since more than a decade, right? Um, but in fact, there has been a significant improvement uh, because we switched to a new pressure sensor technology called the capacitive technology. And just to give you a very few numbers, with switching to that technology, we could reduce the, the, the current consumption by 85%. We could reduce the noise by 80% and we could even reduce the temperature dependency by 32%. So this means the accuracy of this pressure sensor significantly increased regarding all previous generations, not only from us, but also from others on the market. Yeah? Um, so that's a significant improvement. And this means, um, for instance, when you, when you walk up or down stairs, yeah, you know one, the height of one stair is approximately 15 to 20 centimeters. Of course, there is also a Dean standard for that, yeah, so it's <laughs> approximately 17 uh, centimeters. Yeah? But transferring this to the pressure difference between one, one stair height, which is like this, right? This is approximately 17 centimeters. And this means this is 2.1 Pascal in pressure difference. Yeah? So nothing which any human can feel at all, right? I mean, you don't feel the pressure difference between um, being one step higher or lower. You even don't feel it for, for floor levels. Yeah? But if you transfer this number um, of, of 2.1 Pascal into the technology, this means we are measuring, for instance, the weight of 1,000 of a fly. Yeah? Or the, I mean, you know that transducer technology behind is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a membrane which is bending with increased or decreased pressure. Yeah? The bending of the membrane is by 5.9 picometers. Yeah? This is 140s of the diameter of a silicon atom. Yeah? So this is, in fact, this is nothing. Yeah? And if you, if you think about what is happening electronically in that device, this means we just move 126 electrons. This is what happens when you make one stair step um, going up or down. And this is what can be measured today with electronics in everybody's pocket. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely incredible. Uh, you know, and so it, it's it's getting into an application, not that you just know the person's on the first floor or the third floor. You actually know which step between the floors they might be on. Um, yeah, exactly. That's incredible yeah. information. And I can only imagine if you incorporate that along with something like ultra wideband wireless technology or, or some of the things we're seeing in the, the BLE 5.2 standard for angle of arrival, angle of departure, um, you know, the, the amount of, of information you can get inside of a building to geolocate some object or person inside of a building um, with all of that different data, again, fusing all this data together um, is just incredible. So um, uh, just amazing stuff. And you guys have a new product in this arena, right? That's using the capacitive uh, uh, technology? Yes, exactly. So, so this is what we call the BMP580 mm -hmm. um, um, platform. Uh, there are different variants. The, uh, one of the most current variants is the BMP581, which is bringing all the numbers to everybody's device, which I, which I already mentioned. Yeah, this right, was the QRC. Right. No, a great device from, from Bosch, definitely. A lot of interest in, in the market for that. Um, and, and so just definitely definitely something I recommend, uh, you know, taking a look at for any of our uh, viewers who are taking a look and have a need for pressure sensors. That family of product is, is very innovative and, and a great change. Uh, I, I think a game changer for a lot of our embedded systems. Um, how do you see the continued evolution of, of really machine learning, um, even in small-scale embedded applications, impacting the direction that sensor manufacturers are developing their next generation of products. Yeah, I mean that's that's actually also a very good uh, a very good question with respect to the field of environmental sensing because I mean initially I already mentioned about measuring indoor air quality, detecting how much used air is in a room, 
um, there we introduced the, the gas sensor technology to measure VOCs. And this, I mean, we, we brought that to the market in 2017. And then in, as of 2020, when COVID-19 arrived to the world, unfortunately, it became very important to measure how much exhaled breath do I have in a room? Because of course, um, the, the, the viruses is, is part of exhaled breath if somebody would be infected. So if you know uh, the amount of exhaled breath in a room, you can you can ventilate accordingly and with that you can basically reduce the risk of infection. So this is why the sensors became even more important in the in the last years. Um, but we are continuously extending this this platform by using the power of AI, means of machine learning especially. Yeah? Because um, the, the interesting thing about that sensor technology is a gas sensor can measure with different sensitivities and you can switch those different sensitivities with the operation mode. So this is what we call you do a, you do a gas scan. Yeah? And then of the, the interesting thing is there are many different applications. You might want to measure air quality. You might want to measure the leakage of a certain gas. Yeah? Yeah. One, one, I think one very important example is you want to know very early about fires, yeah? especially wildfires. This is a, actually this is a huge issue for our world's climate. And the earlier you can detect a wildfire, um, the, the easier it is for the firemen to do something. If you just get noticed after hours or days, yeah, the wildfire is so huge, you, you can just fight against the spread. That, that's it. But you have lost a lot of forest, a lot of money, and you have emitted a lot of carbon dioxide to the, to the atmosphere. Yeah? And what you can now do, and this is why I would like to come back to machine learning, you can specifically train our BME 688 sensor on detecting fire gases. So this means with the power of artificial intelligence, we, the sensor can very early detect if there are gases um, coming from even from a smoldering fire, you know, where you even don't see a flame. You just, you know, even like, like we humans, we can smell it. Something is wrong here. This is what, this, what you can train the sensor on. And this is possible by using the power of artificial intelligence because it can detect specific gas mixtures via, via artificial intelligence. Right, right. Uh, and, and that's fascinating. I mean, the, the, what, what that could enable, um, you know, in, in terms of just being able to maybe have remote sensors all through the forests of California uh, or who knows, and maybe possibly detecting fires uh, much earlier in the in, in the burn cycle uh, to be able to put them out would be absolutely incredible. Uh, so definitely fascinating stuff. So with an array of environmental sensors from pressure to humidity, gas sensing, what do you think that technically differentiates Bosch uh, and your offering of sensors in that space from some of the other sensor options that are out there? Yeah, I mean for sure there are there are not much um, not not much um, technology companies around having a comparable portfolio. Yeah, but what I would like to especially point out is that um, one focus for us is to make the power of AI software usable for basically everybody. So it means, uh, of course, you first of all, Bosch Sensor Tech is known for the sensor hardware, right? But a software is has, has at least the same importance for us than the accurate hardware and that also everybody can use it, that you have a, that it's easy to use, that you have, I mean, we have, we have an ecosystem around our gas sensors. For, for example, you, you have a mobile app which can connect to our development tool. So with your mobile app, you can label data, you can see how the gas scanner works, for instance. Yeah? Right. We have a desktop software which can, which can easily be used even by pupils without any training before to train a neural network. Yeah. So, so this is, I think this is a special thing which we are bringing to the market. We want to make the new technologies being usable for basically everybody. Yeah? Of course, there is also an export support supplied by us. Yeah? I mean, for, for developing sensor networks or for, for important um, sensor devices, you always have some questions where you come to, where you really need the latest knowledge and experience with that technology. But uh, we would like to make the start into that topic and the use of, of artificial intelligence as easy as possible for everybody. Right. And I love that you're considering the ecosystem uh, to design in with that. I think too often, uh, you know, we see a lot of companies only focus on their hardware itself. But the fact that you're working on building an ecosystem and the software tools that are going to enable engineers to more quickly build up their own neural net um, and to build their own machine learning applications, that's phenomenal. Um, and I think it's an enormous benefit uh, because, you know, we've all got to get our designs to, to production as quickly as possible. Um, and the more tools that are going to enable us to speed through that 
in this very, very new area for many of us of machine learning, of AI, uh, is, is really a, a huge benefit, I think, to engineers and one that, uh, that I think we've all got to take advantage of. So very exciting stuff. Well, Dr. Fix, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. This has been fascinating, and, and I love the advances that I'm seeing from Bosch and, and, and others in this arena of environmental sensors and what I think it's going to continue to enable us as embedded engineers to do. Uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for our audience uh, for listening in on to the, uh, the, the current. Uh, we appreciate your support and for you being here. If you have questions on your own designs, environmental sensors, or, or sensor fusion applications where you want to be able to use machine learning. Uh, we at Future Electronics have a team of engineers that would absolutely love to help you with that. Please feel free to reach out to us at shapingthefuture at futureelectronics.com. Again, shapingthefuture at futureelectronics.com. Um, and, and we'd love to connect you to a local engineer on our team uh, that can get you in touch with, with our staff, with uh, the staff like, like uh, Richard at, at Bosch, at Bosch. Um, and, and get you and your designs moving forward quickly. Uh, appreciate your time, and we'll look forward to seeing you all next time on The Current.